Welcome back. January is National Human Trafficking Prevention Month, and today we are at the Gingerbread House in Shreveport with their regional director, Olivia. Olivia, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Absolutely. So for people who are not familiar with what the Gingerbread House does, tell us a little bit about that. So here at Gingerbread House, um, we have a, quite a few different departments, but um, the things that we really focus on are our forensic interviews, which um, assist law enforcement in any type of investigation that is involving a crime against a child or a child who's been um, a witness to or a victim of any type of violent crime. With our forensic interviewing, we also have family advocates. So our family advocate meets with the non-offending caregivers while the child is in the interview. We also have a child life specialist who meets um, with the child before the interview to kind of just get them ready and help them understand what they're here for. Um, and then our family advocates also do a back to school program, a Thanksgiving program, and a Christmas program um, just to help families out um, throughout the year. We also have an education program which um, does education prevention to kids all over the northwest region of Louisiana, um, helping them kind of understand how to keep their body safe and what to do if they ever feel like they're unsafe. Um, and then we also have counseling, um, which is all of the services that I just named are completely free of charge um, to all of our families that come through the Gingerbread House and to anybody in northwest Louisiana. And I know when it comes to helping um, victims of human trafficking, you guys specifically focus on children. So for people who are not aware what that looks like, can you tell us some of the signs of that? Yeah, absolutely. So in our kids, um, there's a lot of different signs that you can look out for. Um, some just to kind of briefly go over them include like kids who are really um, kind of defensive about their phone. They don't want anybody to look at their phone. They don't want anybody to know what's on it. Um, kids who are missing a lot of school or who are sleeping in school. Kids who are running away. Um, kids who may have like unexplained items that they didn't have before. Um, getting their hair done all the time, nails done all the time, going out to eat, having new purses, things like that, um, or new games that they didn't have before that just kind of happens unexplained. There's not really any reason for it. Um, so those are definitely some things to look out for. Um, also like tattoos that they can't explain, things like that. Um, really just any like major change in behavior or a major change in their life that's like unexplainable. And you spoke to me earlier about social media. We are in a new day and age and that's a big way that kids are getting traffic now. Yeah, that is a huge shift that we've seen really over the last few years. Um, we still see our trafficking that we were seeing before that's that more kind of in-person um, human trafficking, but we're also seeing a big increase of human trafficking online where people are targeting kids through different social media apps, different games where they can chat um, and kind of pulling them in that way as well. And I, I, I know you have some shocking stats specifically in our area. Can you share some of that with us, please? Absolutely. So in 2023, we had 119 kids who were at risk of being trafficked. And of those 119, 14 of those kids were confirmed for trafficking. Yeah. And the only thing that really separates those two groups is that the kids who are at risk, they have all the red flags. They have all the signs that we've been trained to look out for. We kind of can see that there are some concerning patterns going going on. Um but they don't come in and kind of say like, yes, this is happening to me, or yes, I'm a victim of this, which identifying themselves as a victim is a huge barrier to our human trafficking kids, um, just because there's so much stigma involved. But our kid, our 14 who were confirmed, the difference is that they have all the exact same things, except they came in and they said, this is something that's happening to me, and um, we're able to kind of identify themselves as a victim of that crime. Well, before I let you go, you know, you say you see these signs that you just told us of how what do you do how do you help so if you see any of these signs or notice anything going on the most important thing is to report that to law enforcement and DCFS um, so to your local law enforcement or to the law enforcement that you think the abuse might be happening in and kind of let them handle that from there um, we get every single human trafficking case that comes through our region um, as well as the rest of the state and so just making sure that you report that to the proper channels is the number one thing that you can do. All right. Well, Olivia, thank you so much for yeah. the work that you do. Thank you.